DMZ season three update has just been fully revealed and this update is going to change everything. We'll be breaking down everything you need to know with regards to brand new plate carriers, backpacks, a new field upgrade, new ways to exfil, new type of key, new bosses, a workbench system, a barter system, active duty operator slots. There is just so much. Let's catch you up to speed, but to make sure you don't miss anything DMZ with season three and beyond, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'd love to know your thoughts on everything in this update in the comments below because it is incredible. This really feels like DMZ is becoming a much bigger mode with these updates. So let's start off with the barter system. Up until now, a lot of the collectible non-lethal items in DMZ have had no purpose, but with the barter system, this completely changes how the buy stations will work as no longer will you just be able to buy gear and weapons, but you now have this bartering system where you'll be able to use recipes that will give you instructions, including a component list in order to build new equipment that could be more useful to your current situation. Start with most of the recipes will contain the new plate carriers and backpacks that we'll talk about in a moment, as well as building kill streaks, self revive kits, and keys. Each of DMZ's maps will have its own set of barter options across its buy stations, which will add another element to exploring in DMZ. There are dozens of item trade combinations, meaning anyone can memorize these recipes, search for specific items in the world in order to load up on loot. And this will be a perfect way to gear up on those harder to find items in exchange for a lot of the random loot you find lying around the map. The next thing we want to talk about is the contraband workbench. These will be found nearby stations and will allow you to add attachments that you've unlocked for any weapon platform onto a piece of contraband or insured weapon. The way that it works is you'll be able to remove the pieces on the weapon piece by piece and it will provide an attachment swapping service for a price given how much a weapon's strengths and weaknesses can change based on the attachments it has or what is removed. And will essentially be able to turn any gun from being completely useless into the meta version of that gun, including any guns that the AI drop, which is going to be so useful. Let's talk about the new items that are being added into DMZ with season three. We're talking about new backpacks and new plate carriers. So starting out with the new backpacks, we have two of them. One is called a secure backpack and the other is called a scavenger backpack. Secure backpack secures your items between runs, which means that those non-contraband, not on soldier items are secured in your inventory and don't convert to XP upon extraction which is an absolutely huge deal. This is an absolute game changer. And it's also noted that items in a secure backpack are kept to your active duty soldier if you were killed in DMZ. So you don't lose any of your stuff, which is absolutely crazy. Meaning if you lose an important mission item, if you're going for a specific mission run, it will still be there with the secure backpack. And the blog also mentions that there will be a barter recipe in order to create this backpack as well as finding it in the real world. With this backpack, if you extract with multiple bars of gold or multiple kill streaks, they will all stay in your inventory, which is just incredible. And for the scavenger backpacks, these will take out that third weapon slot usually found in medium and large backpacks and add additional item slots. So you can carry even more stuff than what you can carry in a large backpack. So there is a specific mission where you need to extract with like 30 armor plays. And the best way to do that is to split up where a team of three are all carrying 10 each. Each. If you're a solo player, 30 armor plates is going to take up the entire size of your backpack. But with this scavenger backpack, you'll be able to carry that and more with ease. Let's now talk about the new plate carriers as these are essentially armor plate carriers with perks attached. You can see the images of them here. So we have a free plated medic vest, which grants both faster revives on squad mates, as well as faster self revives when using a self res. The free plate comms vest, which is a signal booster and has benefits such as increasing the duration of a UAV, which includes the kill streak itself, UAV towers and enemy radios dropped by AI and makes them function as advanced UAVs. As another bonus, the vest also gives you an audio cue when an enemy is close to you, like an auditory version of the high alert perk. This all sounds absolutely incredible. And finally, we have a stealth plate carrier that comes built with the ghost perk enabled, keeping you off enemy radars. There's also a tease of armor satchels coming back during the season as well, which sounds 
amazing. This all sounds like genuine game-changing things for DMZ, but there's now a brand new field upgrade, which is specific to DMZ called the Rebreather. Now you might have seen this in the first raid episode, and this allows you to breathe underwater for longer periods of time, which they say is going to be perfect for stealthy infiltrations or tricky maneuvers where air is limited in areas like Almazra and Ashika Island, which has a ton of water. One light in the raid, this will work as a multi-use field upgrade, a bit like the Stim Pistol. And you can even use it as a melee weapon if you need to, which is absolutely crazy. Now, another thing is a new key that's being added called the Skeleton Key. This is going to be the mother of all keys in DMZ because this will allow you to open every single door in DMZ. Now, there are some caveats to this. You cannot find this in the world. You have to use new bartering system and create it through a special barter system recipe. Now, because this is so OP, they recommend that you only save it for those incredibly tough to find keys. But now you no longer have to rely on RNG needing a specific key for a later mission. You can use a skeleton key in order to open up that area, which is absolutely huge. By the sounds of it, this will not be an easy thing to create but man this is so so good now we learned a few days ago that there were some new missions coming to season three and the first thing is that this is not wiping any current mission progress like we saw with season two wherever you are currently you'll stay there nothing will change but they are adding a new faction which is called the redactic faction which will be available to all players and will have three out of its five mission tiers available at the start of season three and two more coming in the mid season. Now we also know that there are two new bosses coming to DMZ and we don't know a lot about them. But what we do know is that one loves to use fire. So that is the pyro. It sounds like there is going to be some massive in-game event happening in the mid season of DMZ. Something huge, which is apparently going to give even more challenge and reward to all operators. And this image we have from the COD blog looks like a sandstorm is coming in. So I assume this could be what this event is tied to. By far, one of the largest changes to DMZ since its launch is active duty operator slots, which are a new critical part of the core experience of taking risk for reward. And at the start of the season, we will all have three active duty operator slots, which is three separate operators with their own on soldier items, such as backpacks, plate carriers, kill streak, self res, and gas masks. No longer will you be using just one sole operator. Now, the way this works is when you're going in game you choose which operator you want to bring whatever you bring back is not part of your global loadout so your primary and secondary weapons lethal tactical and field upgrades are only for that specific operator meaning that contraband weapons are shared between active duty operators but the keys are individual to those operators the way the cob blog describes them is essentially like having multiple lives in dmz but you've got to remember that the core part of the dmz gameplay loop is taking calculated risks and that because their lives are separate you could even easily go back to having nothing for all three. Now there is a massive change to the way that we exfil in DMZ as there are now adding two new ways to exfil. The first is that the heavy chopper which is seen in ground war and invasion will be added to the aerial vehicle lineup but it is completely drained of its fuel so operators will need to find special fuel around the airport in order to get it back in the sky but once it's in the sky and operational this can fly around the map and even fly outside the boundaries of the map, which is how you can exfil at any time for free. After you've flown out of bounds, a countdown will appear just like a normal exfil until you ultimately are given the same treatment as a successful exfil. The other way to exfil is that there is a new buy station item known as the private exfil. Once you buy it, an exfil will be available on an unused exfil point on the map. By the sounds of it, no other teams will see it and it will be considered an extra escape route if you need it, especially if you're doing a prisoner rescue contract. And the last and huge addition is a brand new contract called the Supply Run contract, which is already in Warzone 2. But these are very different in DMZ, where a Supply Run is a much safer version of the Safe Cracker contract, where instead of opening safes and waiting, all you need to do is just find the wooden crates that the Supply Run has marked, and all the items in there are free for the taking. They've just spawned in, and they are all part of that contract. So you you'll be getting some really useful 
your items very quickly and you'll be given cash for completing the contract, which is absolutely awesome. So overall, these DMZ changes are absolutely huge, going to completely change the game experience. I think these are all changes which the game mode really, really needed, but this really does feel like it's becoming its own beast now. I'm really excited that it's getting so much love and attention. Like I really did not expect it. Let me know what you think of this all down below. I'll be live with DMZ season three the moment it goes live on Wednesday. So be sure to subscribe with the bell tick so you don't miss out on that. If you found the video informative, give it a like rating. And if you missed a new zombies Easter egg that just got solved over the Easter weekend, you can check it out on your screen right now.